Three swallow assessments every SLP should know. When I first started out as a medical SLP, there weren't a whole lot of standardized swallowing assessments to guide my practice. Now we have a growing list of them. It can definitely feel overwhelming to jump into everything that's out there. So I wanna start off simple. Let's dive into the three dysphagia assessments every medical SLP should know. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. The Yale Swallow Protocol. This has a few different names, but was ultimately developed by Dr. Stephen Leder and his colleagues at Yale University. This is a three ounce challenge using water to predict aspiration risk. This has been validated in patients in the ICU, post-acute care, and in patients with head and neck cancer and stroke. The directive you're going to give your patients is to continuously drink three ounces of water, but do not chug the water. If the patient cannot complete the task, coughs, or develops a wet, hoarse vocal quality, either during or within one minute of the test completion, then further swallowing assessment is warranted, and you might want to move right into doing a fees or video fluoroscopy. This can be a really humbling experience for a lot of patients, and I think there's a very delicate way to introduce this task to your patients. It's important not to say, hey, you can't chug all of this water at once, then you fail. But rather tell them that we, we would like for them to swallow all of this water at once without stopping. This task gives us a lot of information about your swallow. The pill five. Sometimes SLPs get a referral for patients who seem otherwise healthy, but maybe struggle with swallowing whole pills. While it might be easy to wanna to dismiss these referrals, it's important that we take a look at this issue and apply it to the whole picture. This one symptom could be a symptom of several different larger problems, and the inability to swallow pills can have extensive health implications. The PILL-5 is the first validated and reliable patient-reported outcome measure for pill dysphagia. It is a five-question assessment tool that asks the patient to indicate how frequently they experience various symptoms. Symptoms like getting a pill stuck in their throat, stuck in their chest, or if they have a fear of swallowing pills, for example. It also asks if their problem swallowing pills impacts their ability to take medication, and also if they need any sort of assistance with taking them, such as crushing or coating. This allows us to quantify the degree of swallowing difficulty with pills. Recently, a colleague shared a story about a family member that had dysphagia that they weren't even aware of. They assumed all along that she was having chronic asthma symptoms, and it wasn't until she reported that she was having pills stuck in her throat that they did some more digging. One pill actually ended up in her lung and needed a bronchoscopy to get it out was then discovered that she had a pretty severe chronic pharyngeal dysphagia with silent aspiration that was just mistaken for asthma with her only symptom being difficulty with pills. Imagine that, and kudos to that SLP that kept on digging. Before we get to the third assessment here, I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't wanna miss. So make sure to hit that subscribe button to make sure you keep up to date with topics dedicated to you, the medical SLP. The Mann Assessment of Swallowing Ability, or the MASA, was developed by Mann et al. in 2002 as a screening tool for identifying swallowing disorders in patients with stroke. A 2011 study found the MASA is sensitive for predicting aspiration and can be used to quantify the aspiration risk at the bedside. Now this is only validated for the stroke population, but seeing as how this is one of the most common diagnoses SLP with work SLPs will work with in the medical setting, I had to add this assessment to the list. The MASA is one of the most comprehensive tools we have for assessing aspiration risk in neurogenic dysphagia at the bedside, as far as a non-instrumental measure. It measures 24 different areas, including alertness, respiratory rate, saliva, tongue coordination, bolus clearance, and many more. They even recently came out with an app that you can use on your, on your phone to track the data, and it takes less than five minutes to score. Although the MASA does assess many functions, you may still wanna add in a three ounce water test, cranial nerve exam to assess other functions, and of course, always recommend an instrumental assessment for further evaluation of pharyngeal dysphagia. 
For those SLPs that work in skilled nursing or home health, this is really a great way to show your administrators or directors why this patient will need access to instrumentation. And Medicare does recognize it as a standardized swallowing assessment. Check out the free MedSLP Collective Clipboard Kit for access to editorial reviewed resources on other various conditions that we treat. To access that, head over to MedSLPCollective.com forward slash clipboard, where we also have a robust and vibrant community of SLPs and mentors to help you out with your toughest clinical cases. We'll stick that link in the description for you too.